Hello YouTube, hello Twitch, it is a big day. Peglin has received another balance patch. It's actually a pretty big patch, full stop. Not just balance, but I think the big meat and potatoes of it is balance. We've actually got some new orbs, we've got some new relics, and a new mini boss as well. I'm going to, and I'm just gonna forewarn everyone this, I'm gonna go over the patch before I start a run. So maybe if I'm like, if I'm thinking about it, I will put a timestamp in the comments or I'll put it in the description or something so you can just skip ahead if you're not interested in balance changes. I just wanna get down to the, the runs. Anyway, let me pull up to my desktop and go to the, the patch notes. Uh, so if you're looking to the Steam page right now for your Peglin enjoyers, 1.06 has been updated. The new content, there is a new mini boss called Stompy Stomps. These two massive walking stumps are quite hearty and still pack a punch when knocked down. Clearly, these are based on the diagram, are based on the, the like the tree stump enemies. They've also mentioned somewhere else that the stumps have had the art change to match the mini boss. So, watch out for new mini boss. We'll be chasing mini bosses as per usual. Hopefully, we'll get Stompy Stomp. It does say again just to like you know draw anything from this because again I'm going into this somewhat blind, and not the patch notes, but actually the the, the very specific details of the patch. Two enemies means that cleaving and piercing is probably good against mini bosses. Or this mini boss, like it is on most of the mini bosses on that floor. We then have a new rare orb, the Jupiter Orb. Shoots out lasers at, that activates pegs and attacks all enemies. That sounds really fun. I'm looking forward to finding the Jupiter Orb. Uh, then there's a new boss relic called Safety Pre uh, Pegulation. Sorry. All projectile attacks pierce an additional two enemies. Huge effect. Piercing is probably one of the strongest effects, if not the strongest effect in the game. However, bombs deal 75% less damage and 75% less self damage. I'm not quite sure about this last bit of it. I assume this is to do with the trap bombs, whatever they're called, the red bombs, that you take less damage from them as well. Uh, losing bomb damage is actually a pretty big deal. 75% less damage means that your bombs at Crucible 20 are going to be doing 10 damage with like no modifications. That's pretty poor. Obviously, you don't take this if you're doing something that's related to bombs, but if you're not interested in a bomb build at all, this is actually a fantastic relic, like a truly, truly great relic. So I see this as a a very high up the tier list relic so we're looking out for that as well however if you're a bomb lover you're still covered because the other relic which is a rare relic parallel boomiverse whenever bombs are created in battle creates an additional regular bomb that's pretty big i like bomb builds i, I like bomb orb or whatever it's called but bob orb uh bob orb would create another bomb every time it creates one bomb that's a lot of bombs and i i i sincerely think the bomb build it's going to get a pretty big push forward, and I didn't think it was necessarily that bad, but I, I, I like the bomb builds. I like where they're going. Uh, one of the other big things about this was, and I had noticed this a few times before, but I didn't really mention it, that sometimes when you'd fire an orb, it wouldn't hit the target you were aiming at, and sometimes it would hit a different target. And that was apparently because that the orbs and the enemies have hitboxes, and I didn't realize this was the way it worked. I just assumed it worked like a... Like a trading card game type thing would work where it's like a preset pass like you know this attack is going to go through hit the first thing in the first row but it actually shoots the attack out and because some orbs were smaller than others it sometimes missed certain targets and hit things they weren't meant to or if it was too big it hit certain enemies so it's been changed now so it's actually more consistent rig bombs they do more damage now used to do 100 and 150 i think which were the ones on board they now do 150 and 200 that's a lot of damage like 200 damage is crazy damage so again i think it's pushing this red bomb build which i didn't make too many of them work but i didn't think it was terrible certainly something i would grab every now and again and uh, then there's some quality of life changes you can inspect statuses now on enemies cool very nice uh also scrolling up and down on the preview map is faster with certain input methods i think both these changes were for controllers more specifically i don't play the game with a controller i have no issues with mouse but again very nice good quality of life for all players uh castle mirrors have got an art update not too big stumps have got another art update as well fine and also importantly if we ever get a soft lock shots forcefully end after three minutes so if we ever get into a situation where our orb gets stuck on the map we have to wait three minutes and the game won't soft lock it will fix itself good change i like it now we get to the balance changes. The Demon Wall no longer spawns dull pegs on C20. I think we fought the Demon Wall once or twice at C20. I'm not going to lie, I didn't know there were dull pegs on it. 
other than the ones that pre-existed at the top. So that's good. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a buff to the player, right? So uh, that's fine. All right, here's a really interesting one. Avogadro, in case you're wondering who Avogadro is, he's the mole on the first floor. Attack damage has been reduced from 11 to eight, but now gains one more circle or two at C20 whenever the tree is hit by an attack that does more than 25 damage. Prior to this change, Avogadro was still the easiest of all forest bosses. So our next step is to balance out all three. I'm pretty certain the decision making here was at 11 damage, he was too strong. Especially at C20, he was super, super brutal with the tree denying targeted attacks. I actually think this change might have made him harder at C20, I'm not gonna lie. It means that any sort of cleaving damage that you do, also the mole kind of counters it now because if you hit the tree, he gains two more circle, which means he gets stronger. So I actually think at C20, this mole could be truly, truly heinous to fight. I think at any other difficulty though, like just getting one more circle at a time, you're probably gonna be okay. Also, this probably won't work on bomb damage since it says you have to attack for the damage. So I think bomb build will still be good versus him. But if you've got like, you know, a couple of spheres or something, you're planning just to chip him down with spheres, that's gonna be really hard now because he's gonna hit you for an awful lot of damage if you don't kill him fast enough. So watch this space. I, I believe it's meant to be a nerf to have a guy's robot. It probably is at all difficulties except for C20, where it might actually be a small buff, and I thought he was the strongest one at C20. We'll see, though. Uh, the difficulty of extra enemies that spawn in easy battles from C19 has been limited. Uh, for example, red slimes can't drop in the first few battles. Additionally, spawning in all battles is weighted by the difficulty of enemies, so you no longer have a small chance to get multiple hard enemies that spawn in one fight. Good change. Kind of necessary change. I had noticed this before in the past that... There were certain enemy spawns which were harder than other ones. A big health pool like a red slime drop in like the first or second fight is horrible. Uh, this is a good quality of life change. It kind of reminds me a bit of the change where as well, you couldn't get an elite fight, I think in the first three events. Good change. It just stops runs ending super early. Uh, mirrors can't spawn as a C19 extra enemy. I don't know why. I'm going to assume it breaks the game in some way. But yeah, they can't anymore, so that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that fact. Here's the big news, though. Horribles have been buffed. Horribles no longer have a negative stats and are now 0-0. Zero, zero. We wanted to make this, uh, to do this to make it play better with buffs and spin of intentionality. If you wanted to know the horrible, no picture here. It used to be a minus one, minus two orb. It's now going to be 0-0, zero, zero, which means, as the, the case is pointed out on here, that spin vent the spin vent sorry is going to turn this into a one two by default that's pretty big and honestly any other buffing type thing like the the base peglin has a bunch of builds with uh, buffing pegs swaltor builds horribles are actually pretty good now like I, i'm being sincere this is a big zero zero that's not very dense could hit a lot of pegs i don't think that's that bad i think the terrible is certainly worse than the horrible and i thought that was possibly the case before this change so I think this is a nice change to the horrible. You can't remove it as well. I think it was too big a... It was too big a bad orb to add into the sack. It's still like a roadblock, but not anywhere near as horrible as before. Uh, the way infection works on plays has been changed. It only ticks down after you fire an orb. I think this would fire on the reload twice, or like the infection would tick down twice on the reload. That was pretty brutal. Now that's not the way that works. You have some counterplay to reloading while spinfect. Uh, again, good change. Has this patch been made for me? The available gold in the easy forest spider battle has been increased by 10. I mentioned many times that I struggled to get 25 gold on that fight, and I normally just ignore it. I just take the hit and get like 15 instead. And then funnily enough, lo and behold, they patch in 10 more gold. So I'll be watching out for that one. We should be able to get the 25 gold way more consistent. I'll at least get there or thereabouts. Other big change to the actual mechanics of the game. You cannot get a shop anymore in a question mark node. That's a really big change to the game. There were sometimes at the end of a run where I was like, you know, like I had 200 gold and I'm desperately trying to fish for like a certain orb or a certain relic to beat the boss. And I would go for question mark tiles and shops. Now you don't get the question mark tiles, you might as well just go for the shops instead. So pretty big change. I can see why they've done it because the last thing you want to do is get onto a question mark node and get a shop when you have no money and you spent down intentionally to do that. I, I think it's a good change. 
I think it's a little bit of a shame that this is the case. I wouldn't mind in the future a relic, like some sort of money generating relic that had like, you know, this helps generate money or the money deals damage and shops can now appear on question mark tiles. I think that'd be a pretty good compromise if it gets turned into some sort of relic. So then you can take it at your own like risk. Constricting chains has been changed. This is possibly the worst relic in the entire game. So I'm glad it is seeing a change. Uh, it now fires a scatter shot of three orbs rather than one forwards and backwards. We wanted to change this relic again since shooting backwards meant it only really gave you two options to pick from on each shot. True. However, the scatter shot proved to be really powerful, so we've had to halve the orb damage as well to keep it balanced. Now, I'm going to assume this hasn't been written or like passed correctly. I'm going to assume it's now got scatter shot and does reduced orb damage. We'll see how that works. In case you're not aware, by the way, this is the constricting chains. You only had four directions you could aim at, but you would get a multi-ball. The problem was, and I, actually, by the way, the the the, uh, the wiki isn't up to date, so it also fires an orb behind you as well, I think, on the constricting chains. Or maybe it only does a, a constriction. Shut up. Uh, it only... Maybe it doesn't do multiple anymore, but it goes backwards. It doesn't matter. It was a garbage relic, but because it's said fired forwards and directly backwards, if you hit the four positions, the forward one in one side was the backward one on the other one, as it had like mirror symmetry. It basically meant it was completely pointless. So uh, I still suspect this isn't great, but we'll see. It has been reduced on the damage, but I, I definitely can see a scatter shot being firstly more fun, especially if you can get scatter shot plus multi ball. Chef kiss that's going to blow up one side of the board. Let's watch this space on the constricting chains. I will be more likely to grab it just to see how it actually works. I still feel like though aiming in four directions is pretty big, a pretty big weakness. Uh, heavy hand has also been pretty heavily nerfed to be honest with you. All orbs when you have heavy hand now count as dense. And in case you're wondering, dense is kind of not too dissimilar to firing with times 0.5 energy, which we've been suffering on with the curse of the Peglin King. And that makes some pegs not hittable. And I'm pretty certain that's gonna be true with heavy hand. You'll take the heavy hand, but some pegs will not be hittable, which means if you get a really annoying refresh, you might not be able to hit it. So you're gonna to have to have a refresh build with it. I think it's actually a huge nerf to heavy hand. To be fair, it used to be take it with the run. I don't think that is the case anymore. And actually it could be take it frustrate you to some end. So again, watch your space on heavy hand. We'll try and grab it again in the future, but I think it's a pretty big nerf to it. Uh, also, I don't think we ever had this interaction. If you have Heavy Hand and Unicorn Horn, I believe the marker, the or the aimer as we call it on here, was pretty long still. It now gets reduced because of Heavy Hand. That's fine. That feels like it should be the case anyway. Uh, consuming Challenge has been removed from the Baladin's Relic Pool. It doesn't fit the Baladin synergies. Very true. In case you're wondering, Consuming Challenge is this boss relic here. You remove a refresh of the board and it gives you plus zero plus four, aka it gives you crit damage. The Baladin doesn't care about crit damage. He doesn't have a crit build. Makes sense to get it out of the game, get it out of his pool. Good change, thumbs up. Haglin Satchel has two fewer upgrades, but gives you 50 gold instead. This allows you to upgrade the orbs you want instead of random ones, and I'll add to remove orbs instead. Again, quality of life change, very nice. This was Haglin Satchel. It used to add two orbs to your sack and give you four random upgrades. Now you'll get two orbs, two upgrades, and 50 gold instead, which you could use to remove something. You could use it to buy a relic instead. That's your relic amount. So I think that's a really good change for Haglin Satchel. I like it. More often than not as well with the four upgrades, you'd hit a bunch of pebbles and you didn't really care about it hitting the pebbles typically. So giving the player more choice in the matter that they spend their upgrade, so to speak. And by upgrade, I mean getting the the satchel, getting the relic itself. I think that's a good thing. So I, again, thumbs up. I'd be probably more inclined to grab Haglin, Haglin Satchel now than I was before. Not by a lot, but certainly more than before. Uh, Hero's backpack has been reworked. It doesn't just grant one, two to all orbs in a row like it used to of the same type. It now grants plus one, plus two to all non pebble duplicate orbs that you own. It's effectively the opposite of spin vent originality for anything that isn't a pebble. AKA, if you have two spheres in your sack, you'll get plus one plus two to those two spheres. Now, I don't know about this just off the, the, the rework note here. If it scales, like is it plus one plus two for each duplicate you get? Or if you have three duplicates, is it just plus one plus two to all? I don't know. We're gonna have to see it as we get it in the game. 
personally, and I'm not someone that was a big fan of Hero's backpack, I think this is a nerf. <laughs> I don't really like it, to be honest with you, the change. I get why they did it, because before Hero's backpack was basically worthless, except if you got it early, because your sack was full of pebbles. I say full. Four of your seven orbs would be pebbles. So there's a pretty good chance you would get these runs, in which case there's a decent chance you'd get plus one, plus two. Sometimes you'd get plus two, plus four, I think it would be, with the uh, a, a three pebble in a row. And that's good in the first few fights, but obviously as you added orbs to the sack, and I think I worked out that you had to add like, basically another orb at Crucible 20 to the sack for the hero's backpack to really like, wane off dramatically. At that point, it was basically a worthless relic. Now, it isn't worthless, you have more control over the buff, but unfortunately you don't get it on the pebbles anymore, so it's a really weak buff, but to like, it's a weak buff and you only get it on very specific things. Remember to get like additional copies of orbs in your sack, you have to pay the money for it, so it's pretty heavy a price. I think it turns into a relic that you want early to something you want in the mid game, maybe. I don't know. Hands up, I'm not entirely certain, but my gut feeling is that you had a reason to take it before. I feel like you have less of a reason to take it now. There's not that many times I take duplicate orbs that aren't pebbles. Sometimes not true, but most of the time uh, that is the the case. By the way, this was the old version of the backpack, in case you were wondering. Uh, but that is not the case anymore. Uh, Recombobulator is being buffed. It now respawns rig bombs as regular bombs. Uh, I believe Recombobulator, if you were a rig bomb, which I think is the actual term of a red bomb, if you respawn the red bomb, it would come back as a red bomb again, which means you could take, like, absolutely metric fuck tons of damage depending on the build you were doing. Especially if, like, bombs were hitting multiple pegs and the red bombs were hitting more red bombs and you were hitting multiple refreshes, you basically could kill yourself with Recombobulator. Now it turns those red bombs into uh, the regular bombs, the black bombs, which means you're not going to absolutely wreck your own face firing one of these things off. Also makes the the red bomb creator better, the orb, as that means if you fill your board with red bombs and you have Recombobulator, you only have to take the rig bomb damage one time and then they turn into black bombs, lovely, lovely black bombs, which admittedly do like a third of the damage now because of the, the changes to the, the rig bombs, but uh, they don't hurt your face quite as much. Again, just a reminder, this was Recombobulator, a relic I quite rate highly. I still think I will rate it very highly. Orbit Story! They finally changed this relic. I think this, again, we were talking about worst relics in the game. This is up there with, like, worst relics in the game. For effectively, it does nothing. At least it doesn't ruin your run, it just does nothing to your run. It's now been changed. It now grants a chest every fourth question mark node you enter, and increases the rare relic chances by 50% instead of a flat 10%. Not gonna lie, I didn't realize it gave a flat 10% either. Uh, this is Orbit's story in case you were wondering. It does say an increased 10 percent chance of increased treasure node. Doesn't say, you know, the treasure is 10% better. So that, I guess that was something that was omitted from the actual notes on the page. Uh, but generally speaking, the change to the, the relic so that it works on every fourth node, very good change. It's something you can plan for in the future. It's something you can get a guaranteed chest for. And I've already mentioned on previous episodes how much I like the bomb build for just enabling you to open the treasure chest and give you one extra relic. Orbit story is probably, if you go for the question mark tiles and chase the question mark tiles, gonna be worth an extra relic. And actually, increasing your rel relic chances by 50% is humongous. Like that is seriously crazy. And there are some extremely good rare relics in the game. So I'm actually really intrigued by Orbit story. I'm not sure it's something again you grab as your first relic. But maybe, maybe you grab it as the first relic and you just chase question mark tiles and try and farm those chests. There's definitely worlds, and I've seen these maps before, where you could probably get, you know, towards eight question marks on a floor. And that might be two additional chests. I, I, I'm really intrigued by this. So watch Orbit's story could be pretty good. Uh, perfected Reactant, the damage has gone up from 15 damage extra to bombs to 20 damage extra to bombs. Just as a reminder, in case you're not aware, this is Perfected Reactant. I, I think this is a good change. The other Reactant, I can't remember what it's called now, the one which looks like an Iron Bar is plus 10 damage. It sort of makes sense that the upgraded one is plus 20. Sure. Uh, buff the bomb builds, I'm all about it. Uh, Perfect Forger, self damage has increased from 4 to 6. Perfect Forger is the Anvil. You have to watch out for this thing now. If you get duplicate all lobs in your sack and you've got this perfect forger, you could actually just completely 
obliterate your face with six. I mean, it's pretty bad at four to duplicate everything you're sat. That often was known like a 20, a 28 ish damage investment. That could now realistically be like a 42 damage investment. It could be half your health to duplicate your entire stack if you're holding the perfect forger. That is really, really scary. So I'm sure I'm going to do it in the near future. I'm going to have perfect forger. I'm going to duplicate my sack and I'm going to die. And people are going to laugh, but that's content, baby. So I think this is a good change, even though it's a nerf. Molten gold has been buffed. It used to provide five gold. It now gives you 10 extra gold. Again, fine. This was molten gold before. You now get 10 gold instead. Nice. I like it. Do I think molten gold is particularly good? Ah. Uh, it, it's fine, right? It, it's okay. Obviously, twice as good as it once was. It wasn't particularly great before. It's probably middling now. It's still something I wouldn't want to grab super early because I think you need the damage as quickly as possible. And when you really think about it, when you really think about it, it's probably going to take about five battles to give you an extra 25 gold, which gives you an extra upgrade, which is effectively then the molten gold gave you a damage upgrade. And at that point, I've normally lost the run to a elite fight by C20, so... It's good, but it just adds on to your run, I think. That's the kind of way I see it. Uh, also worth noting it on this, I don't think gold builds are particularly good, especially at the higher difficulties. I guess this is a buff to the gold builds as well, which is a, a nice thing to do. Uh, Dual Damage Slime now refreshes along with its peg, just like Healing and Lightning Slime do. This is something I didn't know till recently. If you put Healing Slime on pegs, when you refresh the board, the healing slime comes back again. Now it does it with double damage as well. Do I think that's going to make the double damage slime better? Eh, well, yeah, but I don't think it's going to make it significantly better. It's too many hoops to jump through. I find this slime and buffing build. Also, sliming pegs kind of makes them durable. And I think durable is particularly a bad thing to put onto your board, except when you get into the later game where you might have all the ways to refresh the board. So it, it's it's a nice change, nice quality of life change, I suppose, but I don't think it really pushes the power level of the double damage slime. Uh, again, just in case you're wondering, double damage slime is what's left by Twoo's company. So again, we'll try and maybe grab some Twoo's company to see if it feels better. My guess is it won't. However, the other slime that has been changed is the damage reduction slime. It now stays on the board until you take damage. This is actually a humongous change. Uh, so this is the slime you get from Believiation, the blue slime. This used to melt off the board at the end of the next turn after you fired it. And it was pretty poo, I'm not gonna lie. There were some situations where it wasn't. For example, in fights where you're fighting, you know, a bunch of spiders and they were shooting every single turn. This Believiation slime could actually save you like four or five damage per battle. Generally speaking though, Especially in a fight where like an enemy has a wind up. If you get Believiation at the wrong time, it just did nothing. Now you fire the Believiation, you slime the board up a little bit, and you'll get that damage reduction until you are hit by something. That is really nice. And also, I don't know if it is... Uh, it does say until you take damage. Okay, I was going to say, if it's on a hit effect, it would be enemies. But it, again, if you're trying to set up Believiation with something like the... The orb that refreshes the entire board and then you take damage equal to the number of pegs refresh. And you've tried and believe it your board before that or something. Maybe you could set up a scenario where you could actually live and time it well. So I think it gives the believation more play potential. Uh, I like the change. I think it's a good change. I look forward to trying to use it. Uh, shock absorbers, they've been changed. So level three shock absorbers buff to also always reduce damage from rig bones by one while you own it. This makes it takeable in any build as a utility orb to help protect yourself. As such, it's been converted from an uncommon to a rare and is available to all classes. In case you're wondering what this is, it's this orb. So this is the orb that does more and more damage for every bomb that you detonate during the course of a battle. At level three, it used to say self damage from red bombs reduced by two. This was such a niche effect that it was basically irrelevant because you only got the reduction when you fired the shock absorber, which meant for the entire rest of the battle, you didn't get the effect. So it was kind of worthless, especially if you were in a battle with no red bombs, for example. Now shock absorber has this effect at all times while it's inside of the sack. This means it's a better thing to grab just as a protection for the mind floor. As it says, it becomes like a utility orb to protect you from red bombs. I think this is a really good change as well. I like the idea of more orbs having an effect on the sack even if you're not firing it, just like an, just an innate aura, I suppose. So I think this is a good change. And we're also going to see another aura one uh, later on. 
Uh, Bob Orb has been buffed. It now converts the first peg hit into a bomb at level one and creates one bomb when drawn and reduced pegs needed to hit per bomb from eight to seven at level two and creates two bombs when drawn at level three. Uh, it's a bit of a wordy change, but I think it's a, an outright buff to the Bob Orb. It used to convert every eight pegs hit into a bomb. Then when you got to level two, it converted the first peg you hit into a bomb. Then on level three, it was still converted the first peg you hit into a bomb, but it was every six pegs you turned it into a bomb. Now you get the first peg into a bomb, so you're guaranteed to create one bomb, because it was super frustrating with this orb to fire it and hit seven pegs, because you would get nothing. You basically wasted your turn, and that was brutal. Now you'll get the guaranteed bomb as long as you hit a peg. You still have to hit eight, sorry, you have to hit seven pegs in a row, right? On level two, is it? No, nope, on level one as well. Let me just check this. No, it is eight at level one. So the effect is still the same as eight. So it's basically turning into the level two, into the level one effect. Then when you get to level two, it goes down to seven pegs hit and you also create a bomb when you draw it. So that guarantees you two bombs and then at level three, you're guaranteed three bombs. However, it doesn't go down to uh, every six pegs hit. It still stays at every seven pegs. So it's kind of like, I, I think overall, this is just now right buff, right? Because you're unlikely to get more than two additional bombs from hitting every six pegs versus hitting every seven pegs so even though that part of the orb has been nerfed the additional like two bombs you're guaranteed to get onto the board plus the one that you're going to hit from hitting the first peg aka three bombs i think more than makes up for it. so a big buff to the bomb orb big buff to bomb build full stop so let's create more bomb builds whoops wrong tab uh clatter wall damage now also deals flat damage per rig bomb on the board it also converts the first peg it hits to a rig bomb at level one and the pegs needed to hit per rig bomb has been reduced from nine to eight at level two this is the red bomb creator in case you're wondering what collateral ball damage does it was also a zero zero it has now got a similar effect to the bomb orb in the fact that now the level one effect creates a red bomb guaranteed however this thing doing more damage for every red bomb on the board is actually pretty spooky as effects go Especially if you take this down to the mines, it suddenly becomes something that could legitimately do a decent chunk of damage. There are a few fights on that floor where there are eight plus red bombs on the damage, and that turns this into an 8-8. Eight, eight. That's a lot of damage for a level one orb. So again, I kind of like the change. I like the idea that you're guaranteed to get this bomb up front. Good changes. And bear in mind as well, we've had some red bomb changes so that red bombs do more damage. I I'm actually quite intrigued to try this red bomb self damage build i think it could actually be viable now or at least more viable than it was before uh offering has been changed it now hits all enemies not just the ground ones uh offering was this orb which had an attack distance depending on the number of pegs hit and it would go you know further for more pegs hit pierce every enemy and you would take two damage for every enemy hit i actually funnily have had this effect recently where i was like does this hit everything it's, it says attack pierces all enemies on the orb but it only hits the ground fl floor it didn't really specify that this orb was grounded, so I think it's a good change because of the text on the orb that it now hits everything, so uh, I like this change. I think Offering was a, not super weak, but I think it was weaker on the scale of the piercing orbs. Uh, it's certainly better now because we take the Poltorp guys fairly frequently. That hits everything, and that's one of the things I love about the Poltorp guys. Hitting everything lets you do more who do you think you are, I am moments. And that is content, so I love it, baby. Uh, that's the offering. Uh, okay, now we're getting to the 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 one that caused me to do a PowerPoint presentation. Orbalisks now also give increased damage to all pebbles, bald orbs, and orbalisks in your deck. Orbalisk damage has been reduced slightly to help account for this. And also, just while we're at this, the orbalisk is now in the Baladins or pool. Okay, let me explain this to you with a PowerPoint presentation. So on the left is how the Orbalisk used to work. You used to get plus one plus two for every pebble in your deck. Then when you went up to level two, you would get plus one plus two for each pebble and also the bald orbs. And then finally at level three, you also got plus one plus two for each Orbalisk in your deck. One final thing worth noting is it attacks vertically, so if there were two things in the same column, it would hit both. That is still true. I've gone into the game, and this is how it's worded now on the orbs. The orblisk at level one, you get plus one, plus one for each pebble and bald up in your deck. Attacks all enemies in the column. That is a nerf, as we'll see in a moment. 
Orbalisk level 2, plus 1 plus 1 for each Pebble and Bulldub in your deck. However, all Pebbles and Bulldubs gain plus 1 plus 1. And attacks in the column again. And then finally, at level 3, you get the plus 1 plus 2 for each Pebble and Bulldub in your, get, in your deck as before. And Pebbles, Bulldubs, and Orbalisk get plus 1 plus 1. Okay, let's do some maths. Just to try and explain this out more detailed. So this is the case of basically the start of the run. If you grab an Orbalisk, you have four Pebbles in your sack. At level one, your Orbalisk used to be a 4-8. It will now be a 4-4, four, four, aka you'll have four Pebbles in your sack and the Orbalisk give plus one plus one for each Pebble in the sack rather than plus one plus two. That means you lose zero four in stats. At level two, you would still have a four eight because you would have bulldogs in your sack. And, you know, by proxy, it's still going to be a four four on the new version of it. So you still lose zero four. At level three, the Orbalisk would be a five ten because it would hit itself with its own effect. That still happens, I believe, on the new one. But the new one doesn't scale as much. You only get plus one plus one for each Orbalisk in the sack. It also, by the way, in case you're wondering why the number jumps so much, it also becomes a 1 2 for each pebble in your sack, so it does get a jump in number. You're still losing some stats on it though. You're getting less by one crit, so 0 1 loss. Then, though, you have to bear in mind that the pebbles get buffed. At level 1, though, the pebbles do not get buffed. So your pebbles, and this is before Crucible 20, which are 2 4s by default, they will still be 2 4s with an Orbalisk in your sack. This means you're having. An effect gain of 0, 0 times 4, which is 0. And in net means that on the base Orbalisk, for the new Orbalisk, versus the old one with 4 pebbles in the sack, you're net losing 0, minus 4 in stats. So you're losing crit damage at level 1 Orbalisk. However, if you jump up to level 2 on the Orbalisk, with level 1 pebbles all the way through, your pebbles will then get this plus 1, plus 1 buff. Which means your two fours will become three fives. You're gaining one one stats onto four orbs. That's four four net stats. And actually means all in all, you gain plus four zero in total. So you're getting more standard damage and the same amount of crit damage you would got before spread out across the sack. Now, if you take this to level three instead, you're still only getting plus one plus one because the scale doesn't change on the pebble side of things. So you're getting plus four plus four to the zero one loss you had before, uh, which means you're actually getting a net plus four plus three in stats. So all in all, pretty good changes. Then I went further. If you have seven pebbles in the sack, you will then, and I'm not gonna go through each individual detail here, you will at level one Orbalisk lose zero minus seven on the stats. At level two, you will get seven zero on the stats. At level three Orbalisk, you'll get plus seven plus six on the stats. If you go to one pebble, like the other extreme, you get zero minus one at level one, you'll get plus one zero at level two, and at level three, it's plus one zero as well. Then, extrapolate this further, if you take two Orbalisks, and this is like the old ones versus the new ones, and they're both the same level, and you have four pebbles in your sack, uh, this leads to your situation where at level 1 you're losing 0 minus 8 on stats. You're gaining at level 2 Orbalisk, so both your Orbalisk are level 2. 8 plus, uh, sorry, plus 8, 0. And at level 3, you'll get plus 8 plus 4 compared to what you would do before. Uh, I also did this at the, the other minor extreme, but basically you can equate all of this together. If you want to do the mathematics, and I did decide to do the mathematics because I'm stupid, if you let P equal the number of pebbles in a sack and B equal to the number of obelisks in your sack, uh, if you're going from an old obelisk to a new obelisk, at level one, you're getting zero standard damage increase. You're getting the same as what you got before. However, you're losing at level one an amount equal to the number of obelisks times by the number of pebbles. So basically, you don't want to have a level one obelisk. It's worse than it was in the past. However, at level two, you're gaining on the standard damage damage equal to the number of Orbalus times by the number of pebbles, but gaining no crit damage as well. Finally, at level three, you're gaining again, number of orbs times by the number of pebbles in your sack, but on the crit damage, it's kind of, and I put this in yellow, you're typically gaining something. So you're gaining an amount equal to the number of Orbalus times by the number of pebbles, and then subtracted from that, the number of Orbalus in your sack squared. 
There are scenarios though, if you have more Orbless than Pebbles in your stack, where that second number is actually negative. In which case you're wondering, or maybe you noticed this, at my level three with two Orbless and one Pebble, you actually get plus two minus two on the, the stat increase. Uh, that is the reason why you get a negative there, because there were more Orbless in the stack, and it doesn't scale quite as well as it once did. Just in case you're wondering as well, and uh, maybe you're not, maybe you're saying like, holy shit, you spent way too much time on this. If you try to add bold ups to the equation, which is only really complicated if you try to deal with the level one one, it's basically the same type of equation, just add bold ups in with your pebbles. Uh, but it's actually better to have bold ups in than the old case, because bold ups now get a stat buff on your new obelisk at level one. They get that plus one plus one damage. So it does look bad at level one, but if you've got, if you've got a bold up in your stack as well, it actually elevates this very slightly. Generally speaking, you're getting more damage, especially uh, for your base shot damage at levels two and above. However, the one thing you need to take into account with all of this is that instead of getting all your damage loaded into one orb, as it used to be, you're effectively spreading the damage over out of multiple different orbs. So it really depends if you want to have your damage spread over a longer time, or you want it sharp and instant. And there are certain scenarios where you want it sharp and instant, and certain scenarios where you would prefer it to be more spread out. And there are some runs where you'd want that versus others. So it's, it's a bit hand wavy. I think generally speaking, it is a buff, but it's not all that simple. Uh, and then finally, yeah, putting a bold up in your stack is just better at all levels, and especially better at level one, because you didn't get a benefit in the past. Now you do. All right, that is the PowerPoint presentation done of the uh, <laughs> the patch notes. Anyway, this was old Orblisk. Uh, it is going to be replaced by a new one. We will try and make new Orblisk work as well. Uh, all of nothing and extra ordinary have been buffed by the opposite damage types at all levels, not just level three. And all of nothing now is only available to the Baladin, and extra ordinary is only available to the Roundrel. Which is kind of interesting. So, in case you're wondering, all of nothing is the orb that at level three used to say effects that apply plus X plus Y instead apply zero plus X plus Y. Basically, if you had the Must Circle build with Spinesse and you wanted to fire the all of nothing, the Must Circle would go into the crit category. It would always do zero damage on this but would do like increased damage on the crit. The reverse was true for the extra ordinary, where at level three, any spinesse would effectively go to like the muscle circle stat, your base damage, but you would never do crit damage with the extra ordinary. Uh, you now get that effect at all levels. So it's flat out just a buff, especially if you're trying to do, for example, base peglin build, where you might do muscle circle and spinesse at the same time. Uh, it makes this actually legitimately Pretty good early damage if you can set both off. So uh, I, I like the idea of the changes. Kind of odd that it's the round will get the extra ordinary now, since that is kind of like the non crit build for orbs, whereas all of nothing is more the crit build and the balding gets it. Maybe that is the wrong way around. I don't know, but we'll, we'll check it out at some point as we, you know, play the game again. Uh, then we get to the bully ball has been changed to work anytime you've taken self damage and it doesn't require you to lose health this is basically just explaining that on self damage orbs in the past bully ball would only register the the self damage if you took health like actually lost red heart damage if it went into ball work it wouldn't register the, the hit that's pretty important as bully ball is in the baladin pool of orbs and it made it really hard to like balance this ball work with self damage build sometimes you'd be like oh i'm taking all this self damage but you're actually just blocking it with ball work and bully ball would do nothing so uh, a, a really good change i think to make it that it's just any form of self damage it doesn't have to go into health just self damage triggers it so good change to bully ball uh activate orb now buffed to work on discard at level two and its stats have been increased slightly uh activate orb was this funny ring your next shot would get plus X plus Y, where X and Y are this orb's regular and crit damage. I went in and checked, by the way, because it doesn't actually say it on the patch notes. It used to be 0, 1, then 0, 1 stats, and then 1, 2 at level 3. It's now 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4. So it's effectively had its level 3 effect, move forwards to level 2, and then buffed level 3 by plus 1, plus 2. So that's a pretty big change. Also worth noting with this orb, which makes it even bigger a change, discarding it also triggers it, which is a really nice thing to do, because normally... Firing these activate orbs was a pretty, or anything like these ringed orbs, is a pretty weak turn. You take a tempo loss on that turn to get a tempo gain on the future. Discarding it isn't a big tempo loss. 
right? So you discard this into like even a pebble shot. That pebble is going to do some sizable damage. Uh, other things noting for these activate orbs and the other ring orbs like this are in the spin venter. So the spin venter actually will probably add plus one plus two to this and make it even better than before. So I think it's a really good change. Activate up was something I, I used to toy with before. Now I'll certainly toy with it. Uh, and if, like finally for the actual like orb balances really, Orborus crit damage has gone from two to three. Uh, Orborus, in case you're not aware, if it was the orb you would get from the event of, do you want to discard all orbs in your sack? It used to be a one, two, it's now gonna be a one, three. A pretty minor change, but again, uh, kind of welcome because I think the Orborus was pretty weak. There's then a few other changes to like, you know, the Coburn Orb and Swashbuck Club have been removed from the Baladin's pool. Again, I think I, I quite like the idea of refining the pools a bit more, especially if the Baladin hadn't really got any relics that worked with money, for example. Uh, Resistance Knight now starts with the opposite board of the pegs. I think this is Mirror Knight, right? Is this his actual canonical name? Is Resistance Knight? That's a pretty big change as well, because it now means you at least get one shot fight off before you take huge reflection damage assuming you weren't firing a targeted orb. So I think it's a pretty nice change as well. It's definitely nerfed to him, but I think he was the strongest one on the second floor by far, especially with certain builds. Uh, some bombs have been added to the spore stream fight. We knew that was a hard fight, so I think it makes more sense to give you a bit more cleave damage. Uh, Midas event has been tweaked, so the damage you take is lower, but the gold you can run is higher. I think this was destroying the statue, right? You took a lot of damage doing it. Uh, you now take less damage and you get more money. Which kind of makes sense because I feel like you very rarely took that option. Uh, Rainbow Slimes now drop coins onto the board when they take 30 damage, not 60. I'm not going to lie, I didn't know that threshold existed, but again, nice, it gets more money from the Rainbow Slimes. It's not just an enemy you completely ignore. And then finally, they've tweaked the lifetime of the long peg cups in the Forest Planet mini boss pegboard to help orbs fall down the middle of the cups easier. This could be a bit of a blessing and a bit of a curse. I think, generally speaking, this is going to be good. It's going to allow you to do power slides easier, which means it'll do more damage. It might increase the likelihood of getting scenarios where you can't get to certain orbs on the very left or the very right side of the board. We'll see how it works. I suspect it's just going to be a, a good change. There's then a bunch of bug fixes. I don't think any of them are particularly interesting. I found that, oh, there was one in particular I noticed. Sasha Focus now protects you from Nosferatu self damage and damage taken in events. Not gonna lie, I didn't know this was the case, so I'm glad that I never experienced Nosferatu killing me with the Sasha Focus. I'm very happy that's the way that works. Uh, is this the final thing? I'm sure there was one more thing. Uh. I can't remember. I, I thought there was one more thing in the bug fix page, which is actually something that we used to abuse in some way. I can't remember. All right, that, that'll do for the, the, the patch note section of the, the video. All right, let's actually do a run now. Let me also, oh my God, 42 minutes in, I've not started yet. Uh, 42, like 50. I'll note that down for myself to try and remember to put it into the description or something or the comment section. All right. Uh, we're going to play his base Peglin character, in case you are wondering, as I think they have access to all of the new stuff. By the way, I, I went into the custom thing and I was like, ah, oh, oh, this new blank stuff. Ah, oh, I have to go, I have to go and get all this blank stuff again. It's effectively adding more stuff to the super secret series. Uh, anyway, we're not going to add anything on to here because I want to experience the newness. All right, three things that have received no changes: round guard. A strange Brew and Ambiguous Amulet. I think these are pretty minor effects. I'm going to just grab Round Guards. I, I normally try and grab the most offensive option, which is actually the Necklace, but I have a lot of respect for Round Guard. Holy moly, there's a lot of elites. Good. I want it that way. And no Red Slime on this fight. We can't anymore. Instead, we have a very frustrating Bat instead. Uh, let me just make sure this is activated. And I'll try and keep farming a bit of money. Horrible. Zero, zero. Still can't be removed. Uh, we will be firing you, though. I will be fine. Thank you, Horrible. Now we can farm a little bit. Try and not hit all the bombs. Cool. Thanks for hitting all the bombs. Ah. Okay, we can't afford anything, but that's fine. Everything here is pretty garbage. I'd like to go right, 
but I'm willing to greed for it. Okay, we can make up for this. Again, a bat, I'm not that bothered by it. Horrible me. Like, there's a legit, legitimate, ugh, legitimate scenario now where the horrible, terrible isn't going to be terrible for me anymore. It might actually be a legitimately fine series of events, which is fantastic because I get it all the goddamn time. All right, this bat is very deceased. I did make it to 50 as well. Try and get this refresh. Very nice. Get a bit of the money as well. Okay, just try not throw this too much now. I, I can live with the world. I can live with the world where I get hit a few times, but let's try and not make it a lot. Okay, we're not hitting that crit. I'll try and farm a bit of money. I'm pretty certain I'm not doing 30 on this turn. Okay, I can live with this. Uh, nothing new here. We definitely want to grab some piercing. And I'm actually just going to upgrade this immediately. I'm pretty happy, you know, I had the 50 gold in the end. Uh, we'll go for the fight again. Give me some more money. How perfect would it be if this mini boss is the 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 stumpy, the stumpy stumps? I mean, obviously we'll have to come up with a better name for them. All right, blue additional slime on this fight is pretty spookerific. The bomb isn't going to kill, but maybe we'll hit two bombs. No. All right, I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for that. Menacing little blue slime. I'll tr Oh, I won't get it in two shots, though. I might try and take a different port of call here. Let me try and unlock some bombs. And just hit the bombs. I, I appreciate they're going to hit me now. The artillery enemies, but... I might hit one of the bombs by accident, set it off. And then we just don't take the six damage. Okay. That's acceptable. Now we'll go for the refresh. And we're out. Nothing here has been changed. Who am I fighting, by the way? Avogadro. So Avogadro has been buffed. I don't want to hit the, the tree anymore. But that's pretty unfortunate to not want to hit the tree anymore. As I can't not hit it through targeting. And if I hit it through piercing, I get, I let him get mud circle, which basically means the big counterplay to it is roundabout, right? Because roundabout goes from the back. I think I want nothing here. I think we just take another upgrade to the Poltorb, guys. And elite me. Oh, there's no direct path. Risk me. Nice. Okay. New boss. It is a new boss. Right, you have 525 health each. Your map looks cool as hell. I love the mixture of power sliding. It's a dense board as well. It's so dense. I'm going to believe if I power slide this off here, it's going to do a little mini particle accelerator, give me the crit, and do humongous damage. Oh, it works the way I want it to. Oh, baby. Get chunked. We're also pretty slow moving. Okay. Another power slide, please. Now, I could see with this map being very dense for pegs, the refresh could be pretty hard to hit. So let me start trying to work through the... Never mind, it's easy to hit. Let me start working through the pegs. Oh, my God. The crits have been so... Fantastic for me. Oh my god. The Portal guys in this fight is probably pretty good as well if you can hit a bomb. Right, one of them's gonna die. And he turns into a stump. Now, is this stump going to do anything? Because I was warned that the stump might do something. It's wiggling. It shot at me. <laughs> it turns into like a little wood cannon. Okay. Uh, this is pretty spooky. 
It kind of reminds me of the Slappy Wall fight. Wow, they do five damage as well when they get up to you. That's frightening. What was the other damage? Was that five as well from the, the cannon? Let me try and get into these bombs. It's also where the refresh is, so I can't really do anything about it. Uh-oh. Ah, he's firing it next turn. Okay. I'm going to hope that I only have to kill the first guy. Damn it, I didn't get a kill. Nine damage! What? He's crazy. Okay, please fall over and die. Yes, okay. So you have to kill them both, but if you kill one of them, you start taking nine damage. So actually the reward is for you to kill them both equally as quick. That's the counter to the fight. That's a pretty cool fight. That's actually really scary though. If you blow one guy up with like huge single target damage, you're in for a world of hurt. Now I did say I was going to take Twoo's company. Uh, sorry, Will. I'll take a little heal as well. Mental Mantle, Bag Orange Pegs, or Heavy Shaft Potion. Give me my old Mental Mantle. It does a lot of good damage. And let's try and go out to the left. Huge. I will take 25 healing, please. Because I want to fight the Elite again. Okay, this is the other fight that was changed. So, let's check it out. So, this lasts longer now, the bucket. Not gonna lie, didn't notice that much, but it went down the right path. So, maybe, maybe all is true. Right, the, the race of this one is to kill the plant as fast as possible. Obviously, Cleave would be fantastic on this fight. And we have a little bit of Cleave. But I was just trying to kill one as quickly as is humanly possible. Kind of failed at that job. Ooh. Okay, we got the crit, but we didn't really get much damage on top of it. I don't super regret my decision there. Only slightly. Uh, okay, try and get this down in the bucket again. Bomb. Huge. That's two plants dead, right? I will take that before the refresh. We might actually kill this thing before... It doesn't really matter if I kill it before the reload now that I think about it because we have the round guard, but this was a pretty good pace for a fight. Okay, I can live with this. So if I'm fighting Bowman, this is obviously pointless. Potion Bolt becomes more intriguing again because a few of the slimes have been buffed from it. The problem is, it's not that good, right? Well, actually, maybe, 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 maybe. I, I can't target with the poison slime either because of the tree on the, the mole fight. I, I feel like Ice Circle is just like the go-to good orb, but I don't think I need it right now. I'm not sure that's the, the thing that's concerning me. What I really need to make True's company work is something that actually, you know, provides additional damage to pegs. So maybe I'll save my money for that. Mm. All right, I'll take an ice circle. I, I can't turn an ice circle down. When applying a positive state effect to yourself, increase the amount applied by one. I don't do anything right now, so that's not very good. Crits split into more temporary crits. That's something we could try and get behind as this character. We have got the Dag Orb. And Alien's Rock works on targeted, and I've not got targeted, nor will I be trying to get targeted. So, uh, funnily enough, I think this normally I would rate the worst of the three, but I think it's the thing I'm going to take, because it's the thing that actually provides me some value now. Uh, then we're going to take the double chest on the right into another elite fight. It's too early for Ambidectionary, I think. I don't want to be actively discarding right now. It's painful to turn that down because it's probably something if the run gets gets into the later stages, I would definitely want later, but I very rarely take it on the first floor. Every reload grants you must circle. 
And we actually have some reload enabling things now. Funnily enough, I would like ambidextionary back please. Now I want to discard everything for reloads. Uh, if I've just taken crit, so I don't want more circle, right? I'll take super boots. It makes myself look less super foolish, so. All right, got a smorgasbord of mini bosses for this floor. Uh, the mantle can be pretty good on this fight. Piercing is also pretty good on this fight normally. That being said, it's good when you're fighting at the slimes, not the the big green testicle in the tree. All right, good shot. <laughs> Hit four pegs. Uh, refresh me, please. We're looking at hitting bombs probably on the next shot. Yep. Yeah. I decided to take a lot there at hitting the crypt as well, but we didn't. Okay, all of the slimes but the, the blue slimes are dead. Okay, damage. I was hoping for a bit more cleave. I at least killed one of the slimes which I wanted to kill. Oh, I hate when it just bounces out of the green testicle like that. It's so brutal. We'll push some more damage since I have round guard. And we get a free reload anyway. Okay. Damage to all, please. The crit maybe hit as well. Oh, it's on this side. Nice. Oh, was that a new animation as well for splitting the bricks up? I think it was. I don't recognize that, like, split of the crits. Okay, he's dead. What a great fight. We can farm some gold here as well. Really, really good. Uh, Believiation Slime. Do I want to grab more slime? I'm, I'm really now leaning into the situation where I need to get... A good slime, it's called, right? If we can get a good slime, maybe we can make something happen. Uh, I'm actually going to take it here. All right. That it is a slime build, just with no slime enablers. Cool. We can make this happen, right? We have super boots, so we might as well try for some navigation. Plus some extra money. Plus a bit of healing. Uh, do I want to remove a pebble, upgrade an ice circle, duplicate the Poltop Geist? Actually, an interesting question. Uh, I think I want to remove the pebble. I would have been more inclined to grab this. I mean, this is actually quite a lot of money, though. It's 75 gold that it's offering me. You know what, you crazy son of a bitch? I'm in. Give me a duplicate on the portal, up, guys. Also, in part, because... Oh, shoot. All right. My bad. We might get the... The hero's backpack. Oh, I would have taken open story, you swine. I can't afford it. Oh. All right. Buy Orbit Story. And we probably don't... Well, we could consider Spinettes. All right, I won't consider you, though. Right, this is going to be interesting. I'm not convinced we're going to do this. So, so hitting the tree is going to give him more circle, as long as I hit him for more than 25 damage. Uh, okay... I still think we race him, I suppose. Oh my god, the mantle mantle hits him as well. Yeah, he gained two more circle. That's horrible. So I need to sand back this shot. Because then he won't get more circle. Then I need to refresh. And take 10 damage. 
It's one less than normal. Healing slime, come to my aid. He has four more circle. He's hitting harder now. We should believe Yate at this point. And we should try to not crit with it. Because now he doesn't get the Muff Circle. We are protected by one damage. One humongous damage. Again, I should use the non-pace right now. Because otherwise I could give him Muff Circle before he attacks me. Yep, took 11 damage this time. Very, very big. Very cash money. I need that refresh. We get a refresh anyway. Just keep creating healing slimes. They will carry you. I hit the tree for 24, not 25, and I round guarded him. This fight is unironically, like, super frightening now. And it was before. Oh, you missed a crit? Really? After all of that, you swine. All right, no alleviation created, like, like always. Oh, I timed the dagger wrong as well. So we need to sandbag this shot. That's some good sandbagging. Uh, I'd like to not sandbag this shot, but I kind of have to because my orbs aren't good. It's fine. We'll, we'll get. Couldn't get. Give me the refresh. We'll we'll get the healing slime. Uh, he has more circle eight, by the way. That doesn't seem right to me. Okay. I have to kill, or I'm going to die. I s survive because of uh, brown guard. I have to kill, or I do a little die. I have to kill, I will do a little die. We're out. Uh, this fight, unironically, is harder at Crucible 20. This is so frightening. He got the 14 Muss Circle. That's crazy. I have to take the Swalt Orb. I, I know piercing and healing. Maybe I could grab the Doct Orb with it. But my double damage slime does nothing unless I raise the stats, so... Let me grab that. Yeah, I, I think we just sit with what we've got. Both have one less refresh. Everything gets plus zero, plus four. Good with the... Good with the crit build that I'm kind of creating right now. Attacks deal two times damage with every peg activated gets downgraded. That's frightening. And oops, I get morbid, but the con both contain one less refresh. I'm so tempted to grab this. I get a refresh at the end of the cycle. <laughs> it's such a good effect. It's also good with Swaltorb. But it's not very good with the... Well, if I can set it up, it's good with the slime. There's also Molten Mantle, but it's really boring because it means I can't spend money anymore. God, we'll, we'll do a little throw. We've already seen, like, half of what we want to see of the new... The new stuff. Wall means I need scaling... I also need to add something to my stack that gives me refreshes. Or just get this fight every single time. Get rolled. Uh, slime the board up, please. Or not. Still good damage. As I said, it sets up more who do you think you are I am moments. And for that, I, I thank it. Let's try and do a bit of healing now.
Should probably try and grab some of the money as well while I'm here. And you're probably going to die on this shot. Just give me the, the heal. Perfect. Lots of healing, lots of money. I, I can live with that. Do I want another sword orb? No. I need something that does refresh the board, please. In the text. Uh, left or right? We will go left, because they're basically the same pass. With the exception that the left path, I get one more event. I guess on the right path, I could have avoided a enemy as well. That is not the start I was looking for. We'll try and hit the crit. Which is in basically impossible to hit position. Oh, not a good shot either. All right, this could be how our story ends. Believeate me. Yep, this is how our story ends. I'm foreseeing it. All right, finally got one stuck in the middle. We also hit the crit, which is pretty important for me. A little bit OTT on the damage there. Uh, that's fine. This peg needs to go out of the way because I can't hit the, the gap I want to hit. Now we go crazy. Just get it stuck in the box. Nice crit. Okay, who do you think I am? Messy fight. Again, nothing refreshes here. We'll take a heal for safety reasons. I don't care where I go. So, super boot, save me. I'll take it. Haglin, it's time for you to remove some stuff from my sack, please, my friend. We do not need a terror ball. Could have considered the shop, but I, I think shop is worse than chest elite. Generally speaking, reduce self damage. I don't have that issue. Give me out of the turtle. I need a refreshing orb. It's a free whack at this. Holy shit, I nearly did it. New Mirror Knight? It is, it's New Mirror Knight. So Mirror Knight, firstly, is a really bad fight for me because I have nothing targeted. But secondly, he starts in this mode, so you get like one free swing in. Which is very unfortunate because I'm getting a swing in with the, the worst thing which slimes part of the board that I'm not on anymore. It did nothing. Uh, we're going to try and slime the board again. Good, I broke the slime, I think. There is a temporary refresh on this board as well. I'm trying to get to it right now. Uh, it's proving to be slightly challenging. Alright, we got it. And a crit. Get him, Dagob. OTK him. Nope, you're just gonna do a shit ton of damage back to me. Cool. Love to see that in my life. We're probably dying here. But to be fair, I think we were dying almost regardless of what happened. Just because I got Mirror Knight. Unless... Unless we sneak through just. Actually, that one turn of free damage might have done it for me. Refresh! Yes! Oh, more refreshes as well. Or do I want to take Crit Sabala's Fleece? My crit damage isn't very good right now because it, it it's just crits. It's free crits is all I'm doing right now. But I might need to take it because it does more damage than not using it. I could also add two more refreshes to the board, which means my board will have a refresh on it and I have Morbid. I think I'm going to take that for more safety, I suppose, than anything else. But it could realistically be the wrong play. Okay, now we need to recover a little bit. Mm, not loving the recovery here.
All right, not a good shot. We're probably going to do a little die here. Don't don't mind me doing a little die. Because the archer's going to absolutely ruin me. I'm also targeting the painting, which is probably not the best idea. Yeah, my build does nothing. We're dead. That's fine. That's honestly just peggling things. Base peggling things. I got a few okay things, but... Uh, trying to enable the damage doubling slime is so hard with this character if you don't get the damaging relics. Uh, other than that, actually, I don't think we necessarily played that poorly. Anyway, YouTube, that's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, why not leave a like and subscribe? Everything helps me out. Uh, just as a reminder, this will have been... I should have said this at the beginning. I'm so dumb. This will have been recorded around when 254 should have been up. So I'm going to break the timeline slightly to give you this earlier so that you, you know, get it in time with the patch. Uh, but then you're going to go back in time while we do some more of the Super Secret series. And at 254, you'll return back to the present again. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.